So now you can create a chat GPT quickly and easily through Python. It will take hardly a minute, one minute to create a chat GPT. Pretty cool, right? Just one minute. So you can do that. So I'm going to create a lot of interesting lab. The only thing I need from you is decent support, means homework, lab, quiz, and full attendance, active participation. More you do, more I can deliver. Because trust me, this is not just a class. This is the career building exercise. So there is no like one versus other, right? More you know is absolutely will be plus point. And your question sometimes will help me to add more labs. So again, the last two, three years, if you notice that, you can see here significantly, last two, three years, Python overtook Java also, JavaScript also. The reason, introduction of two library. One library was Pandas, Pandas and NumPy. These are the machine learning library, NumPy. These libraries made Python significantly popular. Though Python used to be popular, don't take me wrong, but it was not that popular as people started using. But because of that, and second thing, the AWS and Azure support. So AWS, all cloud provider is now supporting that. And when I do Pandas and NumPy along with that Spark, that is also a beautiful things people use for data analytics world, especially those you have heard big data, right? Either you use Hadoop or Spark. And Spark people use Python. In case if you have heard about Databricks, that is also Python. So Python is getting more and more in AI slash machine learning. And that is the reason popularity is increasing. That is one of the reason we started teaching Python in data analysis course. Though it requires a little bit programming skill, but again, having zero skill versus having some skill is much better. So we are thinking about those who are no, not, do not have a programming background. Don't worry, this is scripting language. As long as you understand concept, you don't have to memorize anything. It's not like, oh my God, I don't have to use Google. I have to do myself. If you can read it, you can do it, okay? Now, we talk about that there is a, the motivation about the salary aspect last week talk about. R programming, you can see here, and then using our Python program. It's kind of almost similar way. So those who know R, they should know Python because it gives you plus point because some company will use Python, some company use R programming. And then we talk about there are a lot of benefits Python programming give. It is one of the definitely interpreted language and it also supports object oriented. So we'll cover object oriented programming as a one special week in that. And then we have to cover about other aspects. So database, we'll cover that one week for database. So we will use MySQL uh, for connecting. So those who have a computer where we can install MySQL, great. I know we have some people who are Mac user, Again, I'm not against Mac. You do need to figure it out how to install MySQL because I'm not a, what you call, Windows versus Mac. If you are using operating system Mac, you might need to have a little bit extra precaution or extra to. If you ask me, Python is almost every industry. The machine learning is the one where Python becoming more and more popularity, and that's what I talk about. Now, anytime you want to do web services call or anytime you want to write a like a certain type of uh, scripting, Python is so simple. It's easy to write that. So we'll cover that as we go further. These are the area where you get extra weightage because I'm gonna add more lab for that. And then we talk about why Python. So Python, Spark give us significant thing and those natural processing language or if you think about TensorFlow, which is like a Google library, PyTorch, and there are many more library, Pandas, Kyo Python, huge left. Again, these are we are going to do through exercise, so you will learn as we go. These are easy library, if you ask me. The most important thing is the programming, and that's what we are learning right now. And we talk about Python is used by all of the programming quickly. And then we last week, we installed the Python. In case if you do not have a Python installed, you can quickly click on the link and you can install the Python. Again, I'm gonna put the link in the chat. So those who do not have in Python in, installed, Make sure you install that. Again, in this side, you can download the software based on the release. We are using higher version now. After Python 3.10, all those versions are kind of very identical, but there are subtle difference between 3.9 versus 3.10 and all. But most of the software will work because majority programming uh, syntax 
are kind of comparably similar. But as you go for machine learning library and all, there are special requirement for version. Now, wherever it is the version specific, I will highlight it that you need this version. Because some of you might have old version of Python like 3.7, 3.8, it will work 95% lab. There are a few labs, you need a special version. Good news, all are free. You can have one machine can have multiple version of Python. So you can have multiple versions. So don't worry about it. At any time you can install, you just click it and download. When you download it, when you install, make sure when you follow that, during installation, there will be a check mark install Python in a path, make sure you check that. So if you do that, then onwards, you won't have any problem because we are going to install lots of module. We are going to install lots of module in our Python. So Python itself is a library, but you can add on, you can add on many, many library. So when you want to add on many library, make sure Python is installed in a path. So there is a check mark, which allows you to add Python in a path. When you do that, there is a special library called pip, which is called Python install package. So Python <coughs> package installer, this is a pip library, which comes with the three series where we will be installing so many library. If you love Python, trust me, I'll take you to the next level. I personally do nowadays most of my personal coding in Python because first it's faster and second is easier also. I love Java, don't take me wrong, but in, if I need to write something in Java, it may take a days, but if I want to do the same thing in Python, maybe it will take hours. So first is the productiveness. And second is I can easily cut and paste in other machines and it will work. Java require a lot of things. Python require very simple, easy software. So I'll show you some of the things which I do for our use cases also. So I'll show you also. And then, and then we started doing coding. So at this moment, any questions? Any questions, concerns? Okay. If you have, please, otherwise let's start. Start your Python so we can start doing coding. So first of all, I'm hoping you have Python installed. So just search IDLE. IDLE stands for Integrative Development Learning Environment. Integrated Development Learning Environment. So just click on that and start. So IDLE and you click on it. So when you see here, it's right away, show you the version and here you get a prompt. Please understand. As a beginner, you may wanna write some commands and try to learn Python, but this is not the Python. These are each line is called command. Each line is a command, you cannot save it. So if you wanna like try it out, you can do like this way, like example, two plus three, three plus four, seven. You can do that. Let me increase my font. Give me one more second because this is tiny font. Some of you may not be able to see it. So bear with me. Apply much better. So <clears throat> three plus four, which is seven. You can do some simple. This is a command. Example, if I say like example, it double quotation space plus double quotation space plus double quotation expert. And you can see, you can write that it plus min join, plus min join in string you are joining space. There is a space here. So you're adding space here. You can see that. And then you're joining expert. So it space expert. So this plus is operator. Plus is operator and three plus four, which is seven. Here it's a num numeric value. So we are doing math here, seven. But, but when it is a string, it does concatenation. It's join. So far, so good. Stop me anytime and you feel like, oh my God, I'm not able to understand. Everything I'll explain, but at the same time, I'm recording also. So you can watch recording. I know some of you are having Google Class issues. Please always remember, Google Class is very easy to resolve. If during the break, I can help you or after the class, I'll help you. But you do need to have Google Class and most important is forum, yeah? Now, one thing I want you to learn. See here, when I say three, then I say plus, and if I say it, now it will add it out. So when you are added out, make sure you understand this operator is not working when it is a numeric value and there is a string. String means spelling, double quotation. 
So plus is not working. So if you read in English, it says unsupported operand plus int and string. Int means numeric value and string. So in this situation, you have only one option. You need to do casting. You need to do casting because Python only works like number to number or string to string. But when you have number to string, it blow up. Number to string, it blow up. So now we need to convert number to string. We can just do like str like this. So number will be converted in string and then string to string concatenation is easy. So in our case, number three plus id doesn't work. But if I convert number three here and convert as a string and I do casting, casting means conversion, then I can do addition, which is nothing but join. So let's do it. So if I do like this, str3 and plus double quotation id, then it will work. But there is no space. What if I need space? Okay, let's do this way then. str3 plus double quotation space, double quotation space plus double quotation id. So you can see now you have nice, easy, you can have this number three, then this space is introduced here and then it is inter introduced here. Plus means join. Any questions so far? Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah the, instead of extra double quotation, can we give space before it? I you mean, uh, double can. quotation, space, you can. it, quotation. You can. Yeah, absolutely, you can. Uh, yeah, it's also, it's whatever you write in double quotation will be printed as is. So anything you write here, like example, you give more space here, it will consider that space. Absolutely. Okay. Any other questions? Good. Now, whenever you do like example, I write, let's say, mic, right? And if I do dot and wait for a little bit, it will get like all those, all those operation functions, right? Let me repeat. If you write double quotation, mic, and then dot and wait for a few seconds and you will get a pop-up where you get a lot of functions, which are called string functions. You can see a lot of functions. And here you can see if you can do certain things. So like example, I want to do upper. So I double click on upper and parenthesis and press enter, it will convert mic upper, right? And the same thing, if I do mic capital, right, dot lower, and if I press enter, it will convert lower. Wow. And if I say like example, if I do length, like example length here, and if I say mic, right, now it can get me length, how many characters you have, right? So there are a lot of string related functions is very important. If you want to convert to uppercase, if you want to convert to lowercase, if you want to convert to find out the total characters, how many you have, you can do that. Makes sense. Right? So there are so many string related operations we're going to learn as we go further. But I just want to make sure if you want to do some like quick and easy test it out, you can do all things in a prompt. So prompt is pretty easy. Everything you can do quick and easy way on a prompt. Now let's do the programming. So our first programming is simple programming that we want to write two lines. And then we want to do the joining on the lines because this is something useful part. So let's do it. So if you want to write a program, first you're going to go to file menu, file menu, and go to new file. Let's follow file menu, new file, file menu, new file. So file menu, new file, you're here. Please understand one more time, file menu, new file. I will be doing today approximately 10 plus programs. So I'm sure you will be comfortable. But again, if you have mouse and if you are able to use a little bit speed, you will learn a lot. If you are not able to type, we can watch recording later. But make sure you try to understand because these skills, lifetime you can carry forward. Please understand, hands-on programming skill will be plus point. So let's try. Again, file. If it is a bigger program, I'll paste in the uh, in our uh, chat so that way you will have a program coming to your way new file when you write any program the first thing you should do is write a hash sign which is nothing but comment so here we are learning here print statement 
So like last week we talked about, if I say print, double quotation, hello, right? Hello, right? And if I print here, print world. So I, I'm printing two sentences, <laughs> please understand. So print lowercase, it's a, when I use this thing, it means function. So right now it's a print is a function and this is the argument. So you're passing argument hello, whatever you pass, it will be printed. So first you're printing hello and then you're printing world. So these are the two things will be printed. Again, we have not saved the program yet. So it's a untitled. When you save the program, it will give a title. So my habit is always run the program. So when you run, if your program is not saved, it will ask you, did you save this? If not, it will auto save that. So it's always a good idea to run and it will ask you to save this program. So if I write run and run module, it will try to ask, hey, did you save it? If not, could you? And you click OK. And when you click OK, it's up to you what name you want to give. So right now I'm going to give my, let's say we are starting like series, whole new series. So today is, let's say, we can say second day, right? So it's a second one dot py. This way we will have a, our program library ready, second one dot py. So if I enter that program runs and I see hello world. Give me thumbs up that at least you are able to run. Good, very good, very nice, awesome. Now, please understand, requirement number one, which we didn't cover last week, but I wanna cover. So how do I bring hello and world on the same line? What should we do? What should we do? How do we bring hello and world in the same line? Uh, concatenate it. So I can concatenate it. But I yeah. also want to keep the print statement like this. I don't want to change the print statement. I want to keep print statement. Backslash n. So if you do backslash n, it will go and see what happens. It will, I mean, it will do it reverse. Is, um, yes. It will do reverse. It will do more space now. Make, so, make it a string. Yeah, it does more space now. So there is a small things you need to understand. Rather than backslash here, please pay attention. Python has something called end line. So check it out. So when you write something, it gives you hint here. So let me see here. Let me show you. So I'll show you something here. So and as soon as you can see, it gives me hint here. So it says that you write whatever you want, and then end. And you can replace with this something else. And by default, end is new line. By default, end is new line. So if I replace with something like space or no space, then it will not press enter. Mm. Got it. So if I do like this, hello, check it out. Hello, right? And then I'll say end equals to, and I'll say double quotation like that. So what happened? Check it out. So here, if I run this program, now it prints hello world together. Oh, wow, I like that, but there is no space. Okay, no problem, give a space. Now, if you run the program, it is pretty good. So sometimes this is very powerful. You may need this thing. So if you want to have, even though you have two line, but when you display the result, you wanna print this one. And rather than printing and you wanna have space. So the, after this, you have space and then this one comes. So this line will automatically join the first line. Nice, right? Why don't you try that and see if it works for you. Make sure you do comma and equals to double quotation space. Double quotation space means it will not press enter. Instead, you will type this and then give a space. So it will write hello and then it will be a one space. After space, it will automatically add this word like that. So if I put here, just like this, what will happen? Will I have two lines or one line? Will I have two lines or one line? One line. That's two right. Line. It will give me two lines. What does that mean? That only one line has that thing covered, but the second line friend has that problem. Why? Because this line, this one, see, 
this one will go to same line and it will bring this guy up but here you did not provide end so it will do enter so this one will go to the next line so you can see hello world this one is one line but because this guy doesn't have end like this it prints enter and as soon as press enter now you're in the next line to avoid that you also need to do this one so you can copy this and paste it here now now everything will be in one line trust me i have many many friends they have a hard time to do this thing why because sometimes you want to create some kind of messages and all and you want to put together in one line but if they don't know these they will have a little tough time because they will do joints and all kind of thing so this is a trick which you should know about that trick is end equal to and then space now you will not get end line so means all line will be connected to the same line are we clear yes thank okay. you sir. good very very good now i want to cover one more thing uh, let me go back to the forum all those things i'm teaching is in forum okay i refer forum more often just to you now you know that so this is what we used to do last week slash n for new line slash t for tab and then because i added today this thing so i keep changing the forum which is yeah keeps printing hello sorry what is the question sorry i didn't understand if it something is doing wrong or different it mostly you might be having a different typing make sure you see that because it, yeah it keeps printing hello when i hit enter before I can do world. So I'm typing print, hello. No, no, no. You are not in a program. You're in command prompt then. You're not in program. So if you are in command prompt, it will do like that. You don't do here, my friend. You, uh, need, to be, you need to be in program. You need to be in program. You are in command prompt. So remember I was saying file, new, file, new. You missed that step. File, new, file, new. Uh, file new and you should be in a program my friend so program they, your program will be editor i'll put the program here in chat so you can cut and paste prompt will write away run program okay. will run together so program will run together so when you save this program when you save this program make sure you save this program as a second one dot py and then run run module run run module Make sure you save this program. So file, right? So if you run this program, run module, make sure the program file is saved as a second.py. Then you will not have the differences. If you run, you will always get that. Because if your and my program is same, result supposed to be same. Good. Any other questions? Good. Perfect. Now, one more thing we cover and then we'll jump into uh, control statements so that's a small goodies about formatting <clears throat> so first let me show you last week we talked about this formatting part right this formatting i think you all did this exercise very well that you can write anywhere this this thing right and then you provide format and then you provide the details right so this one let me do it and i'll put it in a chat and then we'll We'll, we'll do this so here let me do it here so if i do here print and if i don't want to do anything like that just one and here let's say right here let's say 20. so you can see here what you are saying here print single quotation and that this curly bracket zero means it will pick the first item so you can see if i run this program and I'll give you in the chat. Give me a second. You can, it prints 20. So this is beautiful. I'll put this thing in a chat. You can try it out. You will need this type of things a lot. That's why I'm kind of emphasizing this. That if you want to write something in English. And then you want to write something. Then you use this thing. So whatever first is always go to first one. So let's say example you want to write second item. So you can write like sum of like this plus this equal to this. Let's say I want to write that. So what I'm saying one, two, and three. So I can say 20 
comma 30 comma 50. What does that mean? I'm confused, right? We normally say that. So 20 will go here. 30 will go here. So 20 plus 30, it will display like that. And then 50 will go here. Because it's position, so it will look nice. Sum of 20 plus 30 equal to 50. Now, I'm going to put it in the chat. This is like a book. Like, you know, you will be using a lot such kind of things. So everything what I do, I'm going to put it in chat so you can understand. Please understand because you have three parameters, zero, one, and two. You need a three parameters. And based on the position, it will substitute this value. So zero will be substituted by 20. One will be substituted by 30, like that. And if I run this program, you will see nice, beautiful 30, 50. Now I say, okay, very good. What else I can do? Same thing. If I say, you know what, instead of format, let's say I say, you know what, I want to write here. <coughs> say, let me just keep this thing so you guys can type also. But I'm going to copy this thing. And I'll say, instead of sum, I'll say your name. And here I'll say middle name, like that. So here, my name is, let's say Tom, right? And then middle name and then last name, right? So this way I can specify that. So you can see here, oh, this is for format. <clears throat> so the first one will go to first, second one will go to second, third one will go third. So I don't want to do equal here. I want to do just like that. I don't want to do plus also. So what will happen? It will say Tom S Patel. So it will look like a one string. So Tom and, S. And what happens if I do not write two and write three? You will get error. Try it out. You can try it out, right? You can try it out yourself. Yeah. Like example, if I don't pass here, but I'll put it here in a chat. Anytime with the, you have any doubt, right? You want to try it out, right? Because there are infinite possibility, right? I'm trying to show you the right possibility, but in case if you want to try it out, like let's say if you don't pass here, what will happen? Check it out. Curiosity is always a good thing. See what happens. And in that case, you get an error. See how beautiful error it is? It tells you right away that you pass zero, you pass one, but you didn't pass two. Now, you know that you pass only two, zero, one, but two didn't pass. Hmm, now I know it. So you can fix it. So if you feel like something, you want to try it out, feel free. Any question with respect to this formatting? <clears throat> Everyone is understanding? If yes, give me thumbs up. Make sure you try so you can understand that part. Good, very good. Uh, why did you get an error? Uh... No, no, don't go there. Don't go. Okay. Let's learn right way. <laughs> I don't want to go there. I want to hide that. Uh, I, I don't okay. want to teach anything wrong that. Uh, yeah. Any other questions? Because we are learning right initially, I don't want to go anything wrong side because if mind is such a bad thing. You will see only black thing in a white, right? If you think about like in a whiteboard, only one small issue you will see, and that will create a problem. Your mind is now focused on the wrong direction. There is no value of learning the wrong way. Always value is running right way. So as an instructor, my goal is to always initially, especially first three weeks, don't even think negative. Always make pro program working. Because then if you add that, your mind will learn right way. Because this is the problem in programmers. Programming is a structure way to learn. It takes three weeks, but three weeks you should learn it. If you don't learn it, after 15 weeks you will not learn. So it's very important that you learn always positive way. Because many times, you know, curiosity is welcome. But, you know, too much curiosity sometimes create a problem too, right? You cannot focus well. So focus right now. Any question with these two lines, how we are doing it? What we did, how we did? Good. Okay, so this is one way to do formatting, but there is another way to do formatting. Yes, Orip, any question? Uh, just yesterday, or oh, last week, I was doing the homework, mm -hmm. and I noticed when I want to print, for example, 
Mm -hmm. uh, the circle area, for example, mm -hmm. it doesn't take two words. It should should be one word, right? I can't say. Oh, variable. Area. No, no, variable. You cannot have a space. So what you are saying is right. If you want to, yeah, I would use variable area like that. Or if you want, you can do circle underscore. Area. You can't do circle space. Uh -huh. You can't. Work. Yeah. It can't work. Uh -huh. so, so I would it, use underscore. Right. Yeah. So I can't put space. I should put something like. Underscore. Yes. 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 Okay. So got you. Okay. Industry perspective, underscore is the right way to do. It, right. Mm -hmm. I normally whenever I have two words, two words like example like this with first name. First underscore last. I will do that. It's more mm -hmm. readable. Or you use this thing, like example, first and L capital last, camel case. This is also mm -hmm. welcome, but space is not. Python doesn't uh -huh. make space. <laughs> good question. Very good. Any other Thank questions? You. See, remember, if you are not very clear, about what I do. Remember, there is an infinite ways we can do. But these things, every word you should be able to read, just like you're reading the language, like a book, right? The first one will go to first. The join is anything you write in double quotation will print as is. But this one will be substituted with this value. This one will be substituted with this value. This one will be substituted. So you will get nicely. Again, this is a beautiful formatting. But there is another way to do formatting, which I'm going to show you. All those things which I teach, all I have added in our forum. So this is another way. Uh, this is the same thing, but I'll show you. This is another way to do. See here. Please pay attention. Here, I'm not using word format. Here, I was using word format. See, when I use format, I use this thing. Like this curly bracket. So whenever I use curly bracket, I use format. But when I don't use curly bracket, there is a percent I use. Please understand, percent. So everything has a meaning. So if I say percent, percent D, D means digital, digit, sorry, my mistake. Digit means number. But if I say percent S means string, spelling. But if I use percent F, F means float, float. And if I use 0 0.3 means first digit and after, after I will have three digits like this. So I'll show you step by step how it will work and you will understand the things. Again, there is nothing wrong or right answer, but we are trying to learn. So let's try it here. Again, my goal here is to explain basic things first before I use this, because when I use it, you will say, bah, what did he do that? So let's say I have a variable A equals to 50. So if I read this in English, I'm giving 50 to variable A. Now you say, what is this variable? Variable is a temporary storage. Variable is a temporary storage where I store 50 as a value. Basically in, in your computer, somewhere 50 is written. That somewhere is nothing but memory. So now you're saying A point to this 50. That's what you're saying. That pointer is variable, we call variable. If I stop my program, the value will disappear. But A is a 50. Yes, Murthy. Can I write D here? Yes. I can write anything. These are all variable. And this is the value. Can I write 5 here? That's the value. So that's the value. And how do I read this? So I read this thing, 50 value. I am assigning. I am assigning. I am assigning. I am assigning to A. What is A? It's a variable. So assigning is nothing but giving. So I'm giving 50 to variable A. So if that is clear, then I'll say B equals to 60.30. What is B here? Again, same as a variable. What is A here? Same as a variable. The 50 has a pure number, which is called integer number. Pure number. But here, there is a decimal number. Decimal means 60. 30, which is called float. What is float? Anytime you have decimal, decimal gas price, salary price, right? Anytime you have decimal, you use float. 
Mm. But if I use name here, that's also variable. And if I write here, example, uh, Tom, in double quotation, that's a string, a spelling. Mm. So working, I'll say true, that also variable. But that variable, I'm using Boolean, true, T capital, true or false. So that's called Boolean variable. What is Boolean? It gives you only two options, true or false. So this is called Boolean variable. Boolean, true or false. This is spelling, string variable. So variable name is name. Can I use here F name, L name, anything. Can I use city equal to this? Can I use country? Yes. Salary equal to this? Grade equal to like this? I can do that. So variable, you can write whatever you write, but try to use real world. Right, so people understand that. So when you use like a area, right, there are two things, length and width. So you can specify length equal to this, width equal to this, area equal to this. So it gives more meaning. But if you use L, W, A, it still works, but not that well if you write the program. Program has to be written in a such a way that it can give you meaning. People should read that. So far, any question with respect to this section? Any questions? So how many variables I have? Four. They all are different variable, right? Integer, float, spelling string, and boolean. Boolean, sometimes you will have like example, are you working? True or false. Are you happy? True or false. Are you owning? True or false. So whenever you have only two choice, true and false, you do that. That true and double quotation true are not same. Do you guys understand? Double quotation true is a called string, but P capital and true is a boolean. So here, this is true versus this is spelling true. Make sure you understand that. So example, if I say three, that's a number. And if I said double quotation three, they, they are not same. They are not same. This is number and this is spelling. So if I say like example three plus five here, then it will do eight. But if I say three plus five, I'll get error because this is spelling and this is number, it won't work. But if I do double quotation, double quotation like that, then it will give me 35. Hmm, that's a spelling. So this basic understanding has to be clear. Give me thumbs up if you are very clear. Because when you do programming, Majority time, you are doing basic thing. Big things, it's cut and paste. Most of the big things are cut and paste. So example, analytics algorithm, cut and paste. You're not going to write algorithms. Trust me, majority things, the basic programming is the one people don't understand. So make sure you focus on that. Now, how do I format that? So for formatting, I use that line, remember? So now, this print, I don't want to write that long, but I'll show you something easier. Let me write myself and you can write that print, right? And I write A is so value of A. Let's do value of A, right? Value of A is, and then I say percent D, percent D. Then I say single quotation, percent. And then I put in a parenthesis, let's say A, like that. So let me remove this part for a second. So you won't be confused. So what we are saying here, this is what I want to print. And wherever I say percent %d, I want a value should be printed. Can I write anything here? Yeah, absolutely. But this percent %d means whatever you are writing here, that will be shown as a, you know, digit, which is pure number. So if I run this program and see what happens. So here I got 50. Now. Just for curiosity, just for curiosity, just for curiosity, if I do here B, just for curiosity, I do B. And if I run here, see what happens. I got 60, though I had here 60.30. Can anybody explain why? Why am I getting 60? 
Student, I get 60.30. Because you didn't use a float. Yes, there is a float. Excellent. See, this is what I want you to understand. If you understand, this is called value error. What is called? Value error. Means you lost 0.30. You lost 0.30. And people will not understand, but you will understand that because I use here digit, which is a number. So if so I after want, percentage, if you use F, F if I use yes. F here, so what will happen? Which is the float. Now see here. So I get beautiful. Makes sense or no? So what I need here, according to that, I need to change here. And if I say here, point two here, see what happened. What happened here? See here for a second. I'll answer all the questions. See here, there are a lot of number came. But if I want to control this only, so we can say it after decimal, only two digit. Now check it out. Now check it out. Beautiful. Beautiful. Yes, Alex, what's the question? That was my question. Thank that is my question. answer. I knew that. <laughs> I read your mind. Sorry. So basically what I'm trying to explain here is this portion is beautiful. So here you do format, you do this way. But here you do as percent sign and then you pass. But what if I want to pass two value? So example, value of A and value of B. So value of A, then I'll say value of A is percent D and value of B is like that. In that case, I just need to do A comma B. And if I run now this program, see what happened. I can print both value. Pretty cool. So let me give you this. You can try and see if it works for you. When it works, give me thumbs up. Please understand. Programming, you have to explore it. You have to try it. If you don't try it, you will not. You will not learn. Just like a swimming, you can't learn by reading book. You have to try. You have to try. See if you can do it. Good. Working. Good. Very good. Very good. Always remain in a moment. Okay. Moment. Because moment is important. Otherwise, you will remove the chain, chain of thought. Okay. Slowly, slowly, we are moving forward. Okay, because this is all I will be using tonight. Don't tell me like after one hour. Oh, wait a minute. What do you do with this format? What is this person? To it, you break my heart. Because I told you night, good night story, and then you ask, what was the story about? Oh, man, right. I'm trying to do nice story, smooth, and at the end you say, what was story about? Oh my God, right. So it means you are not focusing. Right? Make sure you focus. You will see the story smoothly. Okay? Smooth story. Because we want to create a Python story. Okay? We have a lot to cover. Now, let me write another line here. So, print. So, I'll say, like here, please understand. I'll say, percent as, sorry, my mistake, single. Percent as, single quotation, is, is working. Okay, percent S is working. Now, this percent S, S means string. Then I'll say percent. And then I, in the parenthesis, let's say name. Sorry, my mistake. Name. Python is lowercase. So, like that. And this is like that. So, what we are saying here, single quotation to single quotation, percent. This name is supposed to be written here. But the name is nothing but Tom. Is working. So Tom is working, I should expect. And see here. And Tom is working. Very simple. So now you know how this total thing works for you. If you are good, then we can start our control statement. Because I wanted to cover this formatting because we will be using formatting and at the end, you shouldn't be saying that, oh my God, because your homework requires some formatting. Can I count everyone is good? Anthony, questions? No questions, no questions. Perfect. So now let's understand first thing, if statement. I think so far we are doing good. So we'll start a new program because this is something you will have as a backup. We call piggy bank. I always keep piggy bank. 
Trust me, piggy bank is a gold. So anytime these programs are there, because tomorrow if you want to refer, you can refer here and instantly it will give you clue. Or you can go back to forum, whichever works for you. So let's create a new program, file, new program. So in case previous program didn't work, don't worry. Second program will work. If that doesn't work, third program will work. If that doesn't work, fourth program. I'll keep doing new program. But if so many program doesn't work, something wrong. Do you agree or not? And that's something wrong we need to find out. Because if you continuously having a problem, there are three problems. First, typing error. You might be typing uppercase, lowercase. Maybe you're typing spelling mistakes. This is the most important problem. So typing correctly is very important. And the second is spelling. Make sure spelling is correct. And that is the reason the colorful things which I gives the editor gives you will be very helpful. So let's start with the brand new program. It's a new program. And this program we are saying, checking driver age. So this is the comment, checking driver. You can write anything you want. So here, what is our, our requirement? Our requirement is very simple. We want to write a program, which is P stands for program. The program will ask user, enter your age. So we'll say, hey, what's your age? So age is your variable. You, sorry. Age is your variable. You say, what's your age? Tell me your age. So of course, when you ask somebody, that guy is going to say, hey, my age is six years. Or he will say, my year is 60. Or he may say, my year is 30. Right? So program will check if your age is greater than 16. If your age is greater than 16 or equal to 16, then yes, you can drive. Otherwise, you'll say, no, sorry, boy, you cannot drive. You're too young to drive. Hmm. So I'm still not understanding. So think about that. You are going to DMV. For driver license, they will check your age. Let's say you don't have it. Then they'll say, how old are you? If you say, like, I'm 12 years old, they will say, sorry, you cannot drive. So how did they decide? So they have a condition, say age, if age less than 16, if age less than 16, then sorry, or no, you cannot drive. Okay, so that's a condition. Hmm. So if that condition is true, then you will see story, you cannot drive. But what if your age is 22? The 22 is not less than 16. It means that is not a true condition, it's false. In that case, Yes, you can drive. So how do we write that? So let's understand. As I mentioned before, 20 plus percent programming is the if statement. See, I can write any program. For me, it's not I'm super genius. Let me repeat, I am not. And I, I think you and me are all the same. The only thing what I do is Googling quickly. I understand quickly. I figured it out quickly. That's all the differences between you and me. I do not memorize it, but I understand. And that is where programming thing starts. Because you need to think about overall picture. See, what I did is, it's called brainstorming. It's called mind mapping. So programming will need one variable called age. Programming will need a check. And there will be two type of thing. Condition can be true or condition can be false. So think about this way. Let's do algorithm. So first we are going to enter input. So when we enter input, it will be age. And if age is greater than or less than 60, so that's called decision. Age, age is less than 60. That's a decision. So if answer is yes, if age is less than 60, if it's true, then we'll say, sorry, you cannot drive, right? But what if your age, you enter, let's say 36. So 36 is not less than 16, then you will come here. So the age is not less than 16. In that case, say, yes, you can drive. And then your program will end. So this decision block is an if statement. If statement is also known as the branch statement. Branch, because you are true and false, left or right. Somebody did a survey in Harvard that as a human, we make around 400 plus decisions. Do you guys know that? As a human, in a day, we make around 400 decisions. And they also do psychology test. Again, this is just for your knowledge purpose. Out of 400, you get four to five good idea that can turn around your life or turn around your family or turn around your investment or turn around something. Means good idea. 
But you know, we don't believe any of this. And that's why majority people don't grow daily. Majority people don't grow daily. So this was proven by psychologists that if person write it down, that's good idea. And if they implement, all those persons will grow significantly. They survey all the richest people, just for your side note, richest people, those are technology aspects, like example, Mark Zuberman, Bill Gates, or you know, uh, Elon Musk and all, they all write it down, this idea. I also started writing down because I, what happened, I during morning, I got a lot of idea. So I started writing down. Before I even do anything, I write it down because it's human nature. As soon as you open your eyes, your news comes and something comes and you totally forget those ideas. So start writing it down. Have a notes where you write idea. Four to five good idea you get and those idea can turn around your life. You get average 400, but from 400, four to five idea. Why? Because you make decision what to do and what not to do. That's the decisions, okay? We all are making decisions. So let's understand how program make decisions, okay? So let's get started. So first thing, we need a variable. So we'll start with the variable is, age is the variable and we want input from the user. So we have input, but user needs some kind of spelling. So we'll say, hey, enter your age. Just like ATM say, enter your pin, we'll say, enter your age. Okay, good enough. So if I see this message, I will enter age. But if I enter age, it will be spelling because input only give you spelling. So let's do conversion, int, and then we'll do conversion, which is called casting. We saw, right, we call casting. We are casting whatever user enter, we are casting into numeric value because age has to be numeric, right? So here you are entering spelling means if you say 50 or six, those are in double quotation because your input, anything you enter through keyboard will consider as a string. So we are converting as an integer, got it. I understand that part. Now, if statement, if, if, that's your control statement, if, and then you write condition is less than 60. If is less than 60. So if this is true, then you do colon. Make sure you understand colon. And here the alignment starts. Python love alignment. Alignment. Make sure you understand alignment. So whenever you write condition, you do colon and you press enter. Your cursor will go appropriate like this. It won't go on the first line. Make sure you understand that. Because that means if the condition is true, you will go here. And then you go to this side. And you write else here. If the condition is false, please understand. If condition is false, then you go here. So else also has its own colon and then you go here. So why this is? Why? Because this is only you can do if the condition is true. And you can only do this if the condition is false. Now you say, but it is, mm, I'm confused. See guys, ask yourself question. When you're opening a door, door has a lock and you are using key. Did anyone told you like left or right? No, but you try right and it doesn't work. You try left, yes or no. And you, once you know that, next time you do it. So everyone has to learn syntax. So this is the syntax. Syntax is very simple. You write if statement and you write conditions. So what is the conditions? Because you have variable age, you say age less than 16. Why 16? Because that's the real life. If you say, no, 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 it has to be 14. Put it 14. If your state allows 14, do that. If your state allows 16, this is the example. Some state might have 18, some state might have 12, some state might have 14. Who cares? We can change that. Then colon. And as soon as I press enter, you see how cursor is now blinking in, inside the if statement. If mean if the condition is true, then I'll say print. Print will say in print, sorry. In curly break, uh, parenthesis will say sorry. You can't write. You can write. So this is like a, this only will happen if your age is like less than 16. I mean 12, yes. Five, yes. But what about 22? No. In that case, you kind of press enter and backspace, backspace, backspace. It has to go all the way. And here you do else and, and colon and print. Here say, yes, yes. 
you can try, right? Simple, easy. Now let's understand one more time. So here, what is the requirement? You are entering input that will be converted in a numeric value. So is whatever you enter, we are checking if the condition is true. If that's the case, you will say sorry, you can drive. But let's say you enter 22. So 22 is not less than 16. So you will go to else, which is the condition is false. You go here. So this is called mutual exclusive. Mutual exclusive means either you have true or you the have else, false. Uh the else, the prints, yes, you can drive. You're missing a parentheses down there oh, where the print is. So in that case, you don't need that. Right. So let oh. me run. Oh, my, oh, my mistake. Sorry. You, I understand yeah. what you said. Yeah. Sorry. Gotcha. Good catch. So now run in the program and it will ask you to save. Run your program. So I'll say second two. I'll say second two dot py. And here you go. So now you can see enter your years. So let's say my age, let's say 22. I'm very young now. So you can say, oops, sorry for that. Sometimes this will happen in Python. It maintains somehow memory for last program. Sometimes it happens, so don't cry. Enter your age, let's say 22, press enter. Yes, you can try, right? And if I run again, and this time, let's say my age is 12. Sorry, you cannot try. See if you can run it. I'm gonna put the program in a chat. So you can cut and paste. Remember, you have to run the program. So you can see that it will work nicely. Make sure you try it out. Easy. Please understand, variable has to be lowercase. If you write uppercase, then you have to be consistent, right? Colon has to be colon. If colon is not proper, then this will not happen. Alignment has to be proper. If I make mistake in alignment, it will cry. Look at that. If I do this, it won't like it. It say, hey, you did a colon. There got to be something inside. See, it will cry. It will give you signal, but you know, who reads about it? Right? It clearly gives a signal. So you need to make sure, I always press enter after colon. After colon, you always press enter and you won't have any problem, trust me. After colon, press enter and alignment will automatically happen. Any questions so far in this program? Working out well? Good. I'm, every time I'm running the program, I'm putting in a chat. So you have access to the program. Now, if you really understood this program, this is called, there are two types of learning which we talk about. Sequential learning, we do this way, right? And there is a one is called cognitive learning. Cognitive learning requires th thought process. So now I'm going to challenge your second brain, right? Which is the cognitive brain. This program I gave you, it's open book. This program I gave you. Now let's say I change the program. Please understand. I have a program which you are going to write. You can modify this program a little bit. You don't have to write entire program. You just need to modify. Try to be like that, copy and modify. I don't write entire program. Trust me, I copy it, modify, because that is called in industry, this, that is called refactor. Refactor is a much faster than writing from zero. So Google, ChatGPT, whatever you do, just cut and paste and modify. But don't cut and paste entire program, because if you cut and paste entire program, you're not using cognitive skill. Cognitive skill means I can understand and I modify, right? So in this program, I want to modify a little bit that I will ask user to enter two value, A and B. User enter A and B. And you need to check which one is the maximum value or which one is a greater, basically. Which one is a greater? Which one is the greater out of these two value? Greater. And then you have to print only the value which is greater. So now think for a minute before you jump into conclusion. Think about what you need. If you need a, if you pass A and B as input and check which one is greater and print only greater. So what should we do? Help me now. How many inputs we need? Two inputs. Very good. Number and one, number two. <clears throat> and then you uh, use the if statement if number one is uh, uh, less than, mm -hmm. I mean, equal or less mm -hmm. than. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then you, uh, you specify that uh, print. Uh, 
very nice so you understood very well so first of all good job so let's do it so i'm going to modify a and i'll say enter a i'm not going to type everything please understand and i'm going to copy this thing and i'm going to paste it here if you don't understand copy paste i would strongly suggest learn that because here a and this is my b copy paste through i can immediately get them because they are identical i'm getting a here i'm getting b here so now this is my variable this is my variable now i'm going to compare a to b so if a and b if the condition is true please understand if this condition is true where a is less and b is greater than then which one is greater if this condition is true then which one is greater out of a and b knock knock b what's the question they took a long time i thought yeah. it's a very yeah. simple question huh? b b as a boy right so we can say that here b is greater make sense and you can write the value also by comma and you can write b okay if you are going here then what is the situation when you will go here in else part when you will go to else part when a is greater yes or no in that case you will go to else part then in that case what are you going to write a is greater a is greater and you can write comma a now let's take it out see if it works for us right so here let's say i enter a10 and b5 a is greater perfect i like that it's easy now let's run again and this time i reverse it 5 and 10 b is greater it worked see this is type of things takes time please try it run it and check it out please ask question if you have any why we are taking a and b because we want to find out which one is greater in order to get find out greater than two value you need to have two variables so first variable is a second is b if this condition is true please understand if this condition is true then naturally b is greater but if condition is false then a is greater so it will go to else part else part only will execute if you are in false and if one is false mean definitely a is greater in that case i print a uh, Makes sense. Mm -hmm. yes i keep getting this uh, syntax error like mm -hmm. uh with every um anytime i try to run ram so what's the error I, and I, like looking at it, 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 it matches what you have, but it's alignment. If you have, are you sure you have proper matching? Are you sure you have proper colon? Because if you have error. Oh, oh yeah, actually, yeah, I'm sorry. Yes, I, I see what it is. Sorry. Yeah, because error only means your differences. Because po programming has a one rule. If it works here, it will work most likely everywhere. Yeah. Sorry, yeah, it's so, working. Mm -hmm. So most of the time, people have mistake on colon. They do this thing, semicolon. I don't know why, but that's human nature. Whenever I say colon, colon, they do semicolon. And second, I say align, align, align. Sometimes they write paragraph, but this is a program. Program follow proper structure. Alignment has to be proper. It's a beautiful alignment. Python loves alignment. So if you make mistakes alignment, you are going to get error. If you miss the this one, you will get an error. Check it out, right? It will cry, right? And as soon as you guide, it gives you clue also. You see how beautiful you say expected. So if you do that, solve. It's a beautiful. And always remember, learning first three weeks, learn right way, not negative way. Later on, I'll teach you how to do negative programming. But when we are walking, right, walk correctly. But any other questions so far? so far so good so i added program in the chat now let me go back to my forum all those things which i'm teaching it's here so it's not like oh my god he's teaching something doesn't make sense we are doing here we are in decisions right and we are using all those you know if you use this equals equals to one time if you use this thing means you're assigning assigning means you're giving but if you use this thing a equals 
equals five. Means you are checking is a five. Answer will be true or false. So when you use two time equals, you're checking is a five. If you use one time, then you're giving. So this is called assign. Assign, you're assigning. And if you do a equals equals five, it means you are comparing. Is a five, is a five. Do you see the difference, right? Comparing, you use an if statement. But if you are just doing assigning, you're, this is called input. You're giving five to a. Many people don't understand this difference. And they say program doesn't work. It doesn't work. Equals mean checking. Is this, is a value is five, true or false. So if you want to say not equal to, you do exclamation like that. If you want less than, greater than, equal. These are normally you must have studied in school. These are called comparative or relational operators. Greater than, equal to, not equal to, not equal to, less than, equal to. So we're going to do some of them. Please remember, colon is colon. Right? Now, we did this exercise. We use A and B. We compare and we got the answer. Now, please understand. Anytime you do conditions, only you go this side if the condition is true. Only you go this side if the condition is false. Will you see both? No. That's why this is called mutual exclusive. Mutual exclusive. Now, I want to create a password program. Login program. So let's create a new program because I think you got this idea. Let's do new program. New file. Sorry, save this thing first of all. So before you go, uh, I'll save it. File. Save it. Let's create a new program. File new file now this program is about login so let's do login <laughs> login check so let's build our logic please understand logic i always tell people and this is my humble if you don't understand programming from my class i can give you 90 percent chances that you will not learn programming because the way i teach for 30 years i've been teaching the way I teach, even kids can understand. Because I taught my kids when they were like fourth grade, fifth grade, they understood. Matter of fact, they did super duper in high schools. So programming, anybody can learn. Let me repeat. It requires a little bit practice and quite understanding. If you have any doubt, you can ask. But don't just like think, ah, I'll do tomorrow. Because three weeks are very, very important because you are learning a language. And I know how to teach. You just need to follow the flow. Trust me, you will learn it. Don't come with the mindset, oh, it's hard. If you think like that, everything is hard. Okay? Very soon, you will be become a programmer. But you have to understand logic building because it's so far, we have developed our sequential mind. Cognitive mind required challenge. And that's what I'm trying to challenge. So some of you might have a little bit, little bit difficulty, right? A little bit difficulty because you're so much in a sequential thing. Cognitive minds means like, you know, somebody say that, you think about next step, what are you going to say that? That's the cognitive and that is what we are building because problem solver is the programmer, right? So we become a problem solver. So login check. So think about, you have a screen here, you have username, you're entering, and you have password, you're entering. And then you click a button called login. So when you enter something, you log in, your information will go. So you're passing username and passing. Now that program will check is correct. If yes, you go to next page. Yeah, login success. If it is not correct, you will get an error message here that login failed. Now the question is, how do we write that program? Hmm. That's difficult. So first thing we need to understand, what is my input? So what do you guys think? What is my input in this program? Login and password. Username and password. Very good. I right. think you're going, to need, you're going to need string in order string. to Very be good. able to record letters and numbers. Excellent. Excellent. So you have like a little bit we call Lego block is ready. So let's get started. In a few minutes, we'll make this program much more interesting. And I'm sure you will learn it. Some of you might say, I know this. I'll take a little bit further and further. So let's get started. So here you go. <clears throat> so first thing first, again, this is our second class. But normally, this is like a, if you go to traditional college, this may take a fifth week to come to this. In second week, I'm taking you. 
Okay, so you can see how fast at the same time, step by step, we are going. We are not going extremely fast here, you will be lost. It's just your pace. I always tell people, essence, right? You are coming here for juice, not orange, because orange will add weight, juice will give you sweet taste, right? So make sure you understand juice. Super duper. Make sure you understand that part. Okay. Now let's get started. So, first is the username. Please understand. Username. You can write any variable as Orip asks, should I write user space name? No, I like this with a user name. It's a readable it's a username. I'll say input. Enter your username. Again, you know better than anyone else know English. Write down prompt. That's called prompt. Prompt user. So user knows that. Then we'll say password. Oops. I love programming. I'm hoping you can see that. Input, right? So input, enter your password. So that is up to this, I got an input. Now it is a check, but I need to have my correct username and correct password. Hmm. Normally it should be in database. Normally it should be in database. I need to take this username and password and compare against the database, but we are not there yet, right? So we will hard code our true password. So we'll say comment, correct username and password. So now I'm hard coding. So I'll say UWD, UID, let's do UID in capital because it's a, whenever it is fixed, you normally do capital. So here I'll say username is, let's say Tom. You can write whatever you want, but I write Tom and PWD. Sorry, username, let's write Tom lowercase and PWD equals to, do I need to write UID and PWD? No, no, you can write anything you want. It's a variable, but I'll say Tom T capital one, two, three. Now, can I use here something else? X, Y, Z, yeah, but if that won't give a meaning. UID means user ID, password, but you can, can I write user ID here? Of course you can write. If you want to, like user ID like that, you can write, that's just a variable, but I'd like to do this. This is my variable. And the reason I use capital, because this is not gonna change. That's what I'm trying to give hint. So in a programming world, when you write a capital, it means static. So example, country name, USA, state name, Illinois, or tax, fix, anything is a fix, you normally write capital. So anybody read the program, they get a clue that this is a variable, and this is a fixed value. So that give a clue. If I use lowercase UID, then they might change my this thing and later on it will be a problem. I can't change this because that's a fixed username and password. Hmm, makes sense. So I hide coded that. Hmm, now I need to check. So for that, I need an if statement. So I'll say validate if statement, if. So how do I validate? So I have user has entered this. I need to validate again this. Hmm. So this one is matching this one, and this one is matching this one. Okay, perfect. So let's do that. So username equals equals. How many equals? Two equals. Equals equals. How many equals? Two equals because you are comparing. Equals equals. Hmm. With UID. And so you can write just English and. That's a logical. So you are having now two conditions. Username has to be matched with UID and password has to match with PWD. Wow, I understood now because this is what you entered has to be Tom. And what you enter has to be Tom123. Then colon. If you enter everything correctly, both condition correctly, this one is correct and this one is correct. If both is correct, then you press enter and you can say print login successful. Uh, don't answer, we need the I'll, equal, I'll, I'll equal answer, that password? Yeah, I'll, I'll answer, answer. One second, I'll answer Muthi. So login is successful. But what if you enter incorrect? Anything is incorrect. In that case, you do else and print and says sorry sorry login failed my mistake 
login fail. I'll answer all the questions, don't worry. Just want to make sure my chain of thought is clear. Otherwise, sometimes you know, I make mistake too. So here, user will enter, let's say, Tom. And password he enter XYZ. So Tom, Tom, that's correct. Password, he enter XYZ here. And here required Tom, oh, this is not correct. So it will go into else, login fail. But let's say next time he enter Tom and here enter Tom123. So he enter Tom, this is Tom, perfect, that's correct. Tom123, Tom, oh, correct, login success. Yes, I see a couple of questions. Please ask question. What's the questions? No, uh, uh, just I'm saying, uh, earlier you didn't put uh, equal, equal, that's why. Oh, oh, okay, thank you. So that's what my mistake, yeah, perfect. There was another questions in chat. Any other questions? So I thought something came in chat. I'm sorry, it's so go fast. I have to start driving home. Okay, no problem. No problem. You will get a recording. Uh, maybe you could ask uh, if you are in Google class, you should get the recording. Else, uh, Harish can give you that recording. Yes, Alex. I have a question. Um, where in the green, where it says enter your username? Uh huh. Do you have to use double quotations or can you use single quotations? I would suggest, you know, this is like a, you ask a very good question. See, in our many time, many time in English, we say like, you know, example, Tom's, right? Tom's last name, something like that, right? So if you use single quotation, it will create a problem for you. Because if you are another single quotation, Python won't like it. So if you use double quotation, then anytime you do single quotation, you're fine. So if you ask me, I always use double quotation. But you say, hey, can I use single quotation? You can, but I normally don't use single quotation. You know why? Java use double quotation. So why would I, for Python, I do single quotation, Java, I do double quotation, C++, I do double quotation, R, I do double quotation, only for Python, single quotation. So Python welcome double quotation, so I use consistently. Because tomorrow, if I want to convert this program to different language, I shouldn't have a problem with single quotation versus double quotation. So whenever it is string, double quotation. Trust me, many problems will disappear. Single quotation works, but that it creates a problem also. And those are peculiar problems. Sometimes it takes hours to figure it out. So I always use double quotation. Good question. Any other questions? Good. So let's run it and see what happens. So when I run the program, I'll give a name because our series is second and three dot py, second three dot py. And it's gonna ask me enter username. So I'll say my username is Tom and my password is T capital Tom one, two, three. Login successful, perfect. Now run again. I can give a little space here. That would be nicer. Now run again. And when I run this time, let's say I'll say Tom, and I password Tom123 lowercase t. Oh, oh, login fail. Can anybody help me? Why? Why login fail now? I enter Tom. I enter Tom here. Because we did the comparison password. A password is equal to PWD and PWD is a capital Tom. No, that is not, uh, here. Yes, you're right. Here I was expecting T capital, but here lower. Very good. But let's do another way. I want you to see how peculiar the problem is. So now check it out. I entered Tom capital and password T O M one, two, three. Oh, oh, again, login failed. Now what's the problem? You will say same because we are comparing exact. We are comparing exact. So this Tom, we are comparing with this Tom and it's not matching. So it's straight going to login fail. <laughs> But if you notice that email doesn't need to be capital. Username doesn't need to be capital. It is username doesn't need to be uppercase, lowercase. Username is case insensitive. Password is case sensitive. So how do we do that? We can convert to that. Convert. Yes or no? And I started yes. teaching you that. How do mm -hmm. I convert? You're close. 
when we started our class i explained upper case to lower case excellent excellent you just do dot right because this user is going to enter and you do lower if you just do lower means all the time whatever user enters we're going to compare it's convert into lower and then we compare because our username is in lower perfect now if you run the program see what happens so now if i have tom and t capital tom one two three it works it works and this is where people who are beginner they make mistakes this is mistakes beginner makes but experienced person know that username is not a case sensitive so you can always convert into lower and when you convert into lower it will work but in password i shouldn't be doing because password has to be case sensitive make sense i'll give this program in a chat so you all can run it and give me thumbs up if you are able to because goal of the exercise is do it learn by doing it okay please do it check it and if it runs yes or a question anyone yeah i have a question i sure. accidentally erased the program but i save it so i rest from that now sorry my, so, my mistake i didn't understand the question what is the question i i saved the program but when i was running uh i accidentally erased it so i need to find the program again to try so you can create a new program go to file create, create a new program again. yeah file new file new but if you want to see the old program it's all yeah, old programs in recent file if you go to recent okay so go mm -hmm. to file recent and you can pick the program of your choice whichever you want just click it and it will open okay all right thank you That's easy awesome. right file recent file and boom it will open yep. perfect okay. thank you hmm? so far are you guys cruising yeah so first we how, yes, sorry. Question? Good. So we understood now basic conditions. We are able to now easily understand these conditions. We are now able to navigate quickly. We are able to do lower. We now know how it works. Now let's make program a little complex. So this is now we are going into so this one. We have in this program, we did a two conditions, right? Here we use operator and. And means this condition has to be true. This condition has to be true. If both condition is true, then you go here. But there are couple of operator and operators and or operator. I shouldn't be doing or, but sometime in a life you can say like if I'm happy or I have money, I'll go for party. So here either condition is true i'll go here both condition has to be true so sometime you need to use like do you need a both condition do you need a one condition so i added those things in our uh, you know uh, in our forum see there are so much things you need to think about it but good news is once you understood it's straightforward it will work yes or a question good now let's do complex program this is my favorite so complex program means you don't have one conditions, but you have a bunch of conditions. You have a bunch of conditions, right? Bunch of conditions. So how do we write program, which is with a bunch of, bunch of conditions? So example, <clears throat> if I want to say that if, if I enter, let's say if I enter one, let's assume this way, because now it's almost dinner time. So let become, become hungry a little bit, and then we'll take a break also. So let's say, if I enter T, then I'll say, you like taco. If you enter M, then it'll say, you like MACD. And if you enter S, means you like Subway. I want to write this program. Mm, how should I write? So let's try it out and we'll learn about it. Okay, so let's create a new brand new program. So brand new program. So here in brand new program, we'll say here, multiple if statement multiple if statement so think about that sometimes you're playing like a hard check right whatever you're you are checking this is oh, if not this this sometimes you are take multiple condition so think about elevator so if you think about elevator elevator has a button one two 
three, four, five. Now, let's say you press this button. The elevator will go. Did you press? No. Did you press? No. Did you press? No. It will stop here. And then it will go further. So let's say you press this button. So I would say, did you press this? No. Did you press this? No. This. So this is something. 